Hello fellow animation enthusiast. In this episode, I will show you how you can move multiple keyframes at once on the timeline in DAS Studio. This is a question from one of my viewers, Pinkish. Hello Pinkish, I hope this comes in handy. It's a little tricky to identify where the keyframes are. So the tools are there. It's just, it's not exactly obvious what is a keyframe on the DAS Studio timeline and what isn't. So I've got this spectacular animation set up here in which a sphere is going up and down over the course of kind of 160 frames. If I let it play, it looks, you know, not exactly amazing, but it'll serve the purpose of showing us where we can do what here. And after frame 160, nothing much is happening, so that's, that's, that's totally fine. So if I go and open this up here and give myself a little bit more room, to show you the ins and outs, you'll see these little triangles here. So this is this, I've only got a sphere in my scene with the sphere selected in the timeline window. I can see these little black triangles. Those are not the keyframes. Those are positions at which there are keyframes, but those are not the keyframes. So you can't really left click and drag any of these guys around. So this is why that's a little bit confusing, but that's because the keyframes are actually hidden underneath these positions. These are just guidelines of something is happening there. So for my kinds of keyframes, these are translational keyframes. So I need to have this T filter selected down here. Anything with T needs to be selected because I'm using translations. There's also R and S for rotation and scale. There's other, which are things like properties on the objects. Those are like morph dials and stuff like that. So you have to enable that if you wanted to see those types of properties. T and R is probably going to be fine for me because I'm, I'm only using translations. But the most important thing is that I need to open up my sphere and open up my properties in the sphere. And then I can see that my keyframes, once again with the little triangles here, they are on the general transforms translation track. So those are tracks really, if you want to be pedantic about it. If you open that up, you can see these little circles here. And each of them has a T and that tells me these are changes that are happening on my object. So T doesn't actually stand for translation. The, it is implied by the track on which they are on. These are the actual keyframes. And T, I believe that is the interpolation. Don't quote me on that. I think it is. I think if I go and set this to something else like linear, yes, that's the interpolation type. So T is in fact the, the TCB interpolation type. There we go. Just got thought. We can clear this up. So if you wanted to move any of these around, you can go and just left click and drag any of these keyframes and they will then move in temporal space. So the, the value is still exactly the same. It's just that the time at which it is happening will change. And you can see that this little triangle moves with it. So you can either do this by left clicking and dragging any of these, or you can control click multiple of these and then left click and drag all of them together. So this will go and move the whole group of them. You can also go and left click and drag a marquee around these things. If you click on the gray space here, they'll all be deselected. But if I go and left click and drag a marquee around all of these guys, including the ones that are above it or whatnot on a different track. So this, the, the top one here, that's the X translate. And then this one's the Y translate. I can now left click and drag and they move all of them at the same time. Now notice that this only changes the temporal value at which these changes are happening, but it doesn't actually change the value itself. That is something to keep in mind in this view. We can go one step further and open the dope sheet. That's another fascinating, slightly crazy thing. That is this tiny thing at the bottom of the timeline. It might be open. This is this little tiny yellow thing. If you click on that, the timeline splits into two and the bottom bit here, that is the graph editor. Some, some programs call it the dope sheet. And that is, let me just go and give myself even more room here. And we can see less of the viewport, but more of the keyframes. You can left click and drag to make this thing slightly bigger. I currently don't see anything though. And that is because I need to select a track on which I'd like to display the 
graph for this. So most of my stuff is happening here in Y Translate. So I'm going to have to go and click that and then I can see a graph appear. So this is per track. If I go and click the X Translate, I can see something else is appearing. It's kind of going off the screen. I only have two keyframes here on the X track. The first one and the last one here at around frame 170. This is going off because the scale of the graph display isn't quite adjusted. So if you go and click this square button here. This is essentially like framing up whatever we have in vision so that you can see all the keyframes. So if I do that, it'll do this and that'll basically adjust the zoom. You can just roll the mouse wheel and that'll just make it bigger and smaller. But if you have, if you see something like this and you think, yeah, well, that's not really, I can't see the keyframes, just click the little the square button here and that'll just go and frame it right up and put everything into your view as it were. Let me go and select the Y translate just because there's more happening that I can demonstrate things with. Same thing, this goes down. So I'm going to go and click that little button. There we go. That is now framed up, which is nice. So here I can essentially use the same tools that we just spoke about. I can go and left click and control left click multiple keyframes. I can even leave them out so I can click this one and that one. And I can also left click and drag them backwards and forwards. That'll change, once again, the temporal position on the timeline, but I can also drag them up and down. So either, you know, as a, as a single keyframe like this, or I can use multiple. Left click and drag for the marquee selection, that will still work, and that'll now adjust multiple keyframes. So as I move them left and right, temporal position changes when the change is happening, and moving them up and down means the value is changing. If I change this and move this keyframe up, that means it'll go further up on the y-axis physically in the viewport, and if I move it down, then it'll go further down. That's how that works. Let me go make that a little bit smaller and just frame it up again and see this change in action. So I'll, let's watch this keyframe here. As we move that here, the ball almost goes out of the out of my view here. I'll just go and I'll just go and adjust that so that it kind of almost bounces onto the onto the ceiling there. So if I go and left click and drag this value up, that means it'll jump higher physically. So there we go. It leaves the viewport altogether. That is how that works. And uh, same with the, with the value when it goes down again, like this one, it goes almost underneath the, yeah, it, it actually goes below zero. This one here is the zero line. This is where we're starting. This is kind of the, the flat zero line. If I go and move that on it, the, the sphere is going to rest on the ground, if I move it below it, then the sphere is going to just dive down. So this is the actual value, in my case, the Y value of the object at this moment in time. And that is how you can make adjustments here. But I guess the question was, how do I move multiple things at the same time? And this is how you do that. You can either use the graph editor to adjust values up and down, or you can use the regular timeline here to move them left and right, or you use the graph editor to move all of these at the same time. I hope this was helpful, Pinky. It's one of those things, timeline, just keep experimenting with it. it. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it is a very powerful tool in the right hands. And you know, if, if you're having something like a Genesis figure, that'll look extremely complicated. But as you select each track and filter the keyframes that you want to see, it'll make your life a little bit easier working with that. If you like this video, then please share it with friends, family, and total strangers. And do consider supporting the channel. You can either do this by signing up on Ko-fi or Patreon, or even do some shopping at no extra cost to you, either on the DAS store or on Amazon. Just before you check out, hit any of these links, then check out, and I'll get a cut of the purchase at no extra cost to you. It'll make my day, and it'll make your day. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.